Hello everyone, this is Team Westside 102B, and we are trying to unravel the mystery of position and capital in the NBA for this final project. So first of all, the NBA is a world-class basketball league, and as you can see from this picture, I actually have the NBA poster up when I'm writing this report. And it is home to over 15 million viewers worldwide, and um, I'm going to use a ripoff of the NBA slogan, This is why we play, to introduce you why we are playing with the NBA dataset. So there are a lot of implications in this um, NBA games. So um, for example, there is a tactic called um, pick, and, uh, pick and roll so that a larger player can be matched up against a smaller player in order for them to score. And um, in this dynamic back and forth, there are a lot of mismatch, mismatches and position switches. So we are interested in seeing the true position that a player is, play, uh, a player is on uh, when on court. And the second part we are focusing on is the salary of the players. And we want to see that whether the salary or the well compensation of the players are actually matched with their performances. So for these two parts, we have a respective hypothesis. So for a position, we are hypothesizing that the position of a player can be further categorized into three clusters of guards, forward, and center based on their game statistics. And um, we are using the cluster analysis namely the non-probabilistic k-ming methods in order to solve this problem. So for the salary, we are assuming that the salary of a player can be predicted based, uh, based on his own core performances per game. And we are using principal component analysis to, first of all, reduce the enormous dimension of our data set, and then use all these PCs to fit a regression against the dependent variable of salary to see that whether they have a correlation. And um, the first step we are going to do is the data cleaning. And because this is a raw data set, there are going to be a lot of missing values and outliers. What we do, uh, how we deal with this is we included um, fit the players that have more than 15 games per season so that their um, numbers, uh, so that their data are more uh, documented and also less prone to be outliers in the data set. And after that data cleaning, it leaves us with uh, 473 observations and over 100 variables, including six categorical variables. And this is a overview of our data. In our cluster analysis, the method we adopted is non-probabilistic k-means. By using this method, we aim to separate the players into three different clusters with respect to the, their, their roles on the court. We initially took into account six of the most predominant stats of a player. And by comparing the clustering output of the k-means method, with the actual data set, as by judging our scatter plots, the variables true shooting percentage, total rebound rate, assist rate, and turnover rate did the best job. Specifically, the best clustering comes from the scatter plot of the assist rate against the total rebound rate, as can be represented over here. It represents the true mean, median, and standard deviation represented on the left side table very nicely. In general, however, our clustering produces a better classification for guards as opposed to the other two positions. We presume that because in recent years, the task overlap between forwards and centers has become more and more predominant, and it has become incredibly difficult for us to differentiate between these two positions only by looking at the game stats. In addition, from these two box plot, it is apparent that the other variables like height and more importantly, usage determine positions, especially guards pretty well. It makes perfect sense because given that the guards contains mostly shooters and ball handlers, they do usually have a better stamina and are used more often on the court. So moving on to the portion of principal component analysis, we have 13 variables, including minutes per game, age, player efficiency rating, total rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, usage, turnover, win shares, shots, defense, and offense. So uh, an inherent similarity between these um, variables is that they all measure the on-court performance of a player. So there is a high correlation between all of these variables. So we can produce latent variables using principal component analysis. And then we can see that uh, the cumulative sum of the first seven variables cover about 92% of the variability in our data set. So in this case, we reduced 13 variables to seven principal components. Uh, we can also see that it's evident in the pie chart on the right. 
that uh, seven PCs can explain above 90% of the variability. So um, here we can use this heat map to interpret all of our principal components, one, two, seven. PC one represents minutes per game, player efficiency rating, player usage, and shot selection percentage. PC two represents rebound rate, block rate, and defense contribution. PC three represents steal rate, turnover rate, defense, and offense contribution. PC four represents player age, rebound rate, assist rate, and block rate. PC5 represents player age. PC6 represents minutes per game and player age. PC7 represents rebound rate and block rate. So moving on to principal component regression, we have selected um, 10 observations with 13 variables to be our testing data that is sampled from the total data. And we have training a training data set of 463 observations with 13 variables. And then we produce um, a correlation plot between the normalized PCs with the centered and scaled dependent variable. In this case, that is the production value in USD. Um, and that is also centered and scaled. Um, so uh, at the end, we decided to choose PCs one, two, four, five, six among the six piece, among the seven PCs that explain over 90% of the variability in the graph. We can see that. Uh, one, two, four, five, six PCs are the most correlated with the dependent variable, whereas PC three and seven have um, a correlation lower than 0 0.1 with the dependent variable. So we chose to discard them. So here, moving on to the uh, linear model, uh, the linear model, as we mentioned before, contains the um, previously discussed independent and dependent variable. And there we can see that we achieved a multiple R squared value of 0 0.7379, which indicates a very satisfactory proportion that the variance for production is explained by the chosen PCs. And it confirms our hypothesis that NBA player salary can be partially explained by their on-court performance statistics represented by the latent variables of principal components. And then we further applied the model to predicting the response, the statistics of centered and scaled player salary production in testing data. And we obtained a root mean square error of 0 0.75. From the fact that the dependent variable in our study, the player's production is skewed to the right, we decided to use a log normal distribution. Using, Nor using, using Newton's iteration, we found that the first parameter has a mean of 14.58 and a 95% confidence interval from 14.52 to 14.64. And the second parameter has a mean of 1.29 and a 95% confidence interval from 1.25 to 1.33. The first parameter stands for the natural log of the mean of the distribution production. With the estimating around 3 million US dollars, the first parameter should be around 40 and 50. Performer is where we set our initial value for the iteration. The second parameter, the SE log, has a value of 1.29 and reflects a highly skewed pattern. Uh, so, in all, thanks to my teammates, we have discovered that um, for hypothesis one, the four attributes we actually selected for the cluster analysis are successfully clustering the players into three positions, and we double checked it with the labeling variables that we set aside and later on um, verified that these positions are actually accurate. And also for the player salary, we successfully reduced the dimensions from 13 variables to seven principal components that covers over 92% of the variability inside the data. And the linear model produced a decent arc square. So I would say that it provides support for the hypothesis that the player salary is highly correlated with their own court um, game statistics. So overall, I would say that our analysis is a success and we successfully used all these components um, of the statistical analysis and we further our understanding on it. So thank you very much.